The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms, and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. Today's lesson with seven characters begins with a pictogram for the human face. Originally, a huge eye centered between brow and cheekbone. pronounced fourth tone, mian, mian. This very basic character represents the face, the surface, aspect or side of nearly anything. Although originally the human face, it's not, however, the character for face as a part of the body, such as, look, you have a scratch on your face. That's another character altogether. Mian is used mostly as a metaphor. Our first example, chu mian, refers to a person literally exposing their face, stepping out in public to accept responsibility. Ta bu de bu chu mian fu zhe. He must come out publicly and assume responsibility. Mian xiang means to turn and face a particular direction. Shou wei de yi zi. Mian Xiang Zhengmen. The guard's chair faced the main entrance. Feng Mian is the cover of a book, magazine, financial report, and the like. Shu de Feng Mian, a book cover. Bei Mian would be the back of anything. Xin Feng de Bei Mian, the back of an envelope. Shang Mian. Xia mian, the upper side or underside of an object. Or they could also simply mean on or under a table, for example. Zheng mian, fan mian, the front or reverse side of something. Zheng mian, fu mian, a positive or negative effect or influence on someone. And si mian would include all sides. Si mian bao wei, encircled or surrounded on all sides. If discussing the surface of a body of water or land surface, the proper terms would be shui mian or di mian. Outside would be translated as wai mian, as in this sentence. Wai mian you ren zai da jia. There are some people fighting outside. To express the idea of comprehensive, overall, all-inclusive, quan mian would fit the bill. The country is embarking on a full-scale mobilization. Now, the meaning of mian becomes more generalized, more abstract. Shu mian, a written notice, a statement or reply in writing, usually for legal purposes to avoid disputes. We learned early on that shu can mean anything written and also the verb to write. An especially useful construction is yi mian, yi mian, meaning two actions occur simultaneously. Wo yi mian kai che, yi mian sheng qi. As I drove along, I see with anger. Notice that sheng qi in Chinese does not distinguish the process of getting angry from its result to be angry. So it's both a verb and an adjective at the same time. To make it a verb in English, I had to use an expression along the lines of to seethe with anger. Expressing a process and its result is an important difference between English and Mandarin. Here's another sentence. Ta yi mian kan shu, yi mian shi dong xi. She read while she ate. Our next examples are related to the concept of face, meaning one's personal self-respect in his or her community. 
saving face is all important in society, especially avoiding personal embarrassment. 父母不停地吵，我多没面子。My parents argued constantly. I was so embarrassed. 男友是大财主，他好有面子。Her boyfriend is very wealthy. Her friends are in awe. 我不坐你的车，我可要面子。I'm not going in your car. I have my reputation to consider. This, of course, is a joke implying that your friend's car is not classy enough. 买个面子，我生日你一定要在。Do it as a favor to me, okay? You have to be there on my birthday. This. Literally is selling your face, meaning to lend your appearance in order that someone can make a good impression on others. Our second character is an absolutely essential one: the verb to come. It was originally a simple pictogram of the wheat plant with root, stalk, drooping leaves, and a left slash indicating where the ears of grain were harvested. Basically, it was borrowed for its sound in the spoken language. Pronounced second tone, lai, lai. However, the original staple food in northern China was millet, and since wheat was not a native species but came from afar, it's very possible that the meaning to come is the reason the wheat plant was chosen to be the verb. This conjecture is not mine, but that of the oracle bone scholar. Shen Kai. Anyway, as with "chu" meaning to go, "lai" meaning to come, has a host of uses, nearly all of which indicate approaching the speaker in some fashion. Beginning with the simplest phrases, we have "come up" and "come down," "shang lai," "xia lai," "zou lai zou chu," means to walk back and forth, to and fro. Lai Xin is an incoming letter. To send a letter here, or your letter, when answering correspondence. 我的朋友好久没有来信。I haven't heard from my friends in a long time. 外来语 is the expression for a word or term borrowed from a foreign language. 可可是 Coco 的外来语。可可 is the foreign borrowing for coco. Walai is used when a person wants to help others with heavy packages, help the elderly to stand up, etc. Obviously, it literally means "I'm coming to your aid." 你不要动它，我来。Don't move it yourself. Let me do it. When added after numbers, it says 十 ten. By hundred and ten thousand, it means about or over that figure. For example, 二十来个人在街上打架 About twenty people were brawling in the street. 五个多月来没有她的电话 We've had no phone call from her for over five months. When talking about round trips or return trip tickets. On any type of transportation, the proper phrase is "lai hui." Be careful not to switch the characters around. Hui lai, otherwise you'll simply be saying "come back." Lai hui 需要四个小时 A round trip takes four hours. There are two expressions meaning either to come and go, or the related notion of personal contact between two parties, business dealings. Frequent social interactions, etc. 街上来往的人好多 The streets are filled with people coming and going. 两国之间的友好往来 The exchange of friendly visits between two countries. Notice that 来往 is the reverse of 往来 but the idea is basically the same. With 来往 Used more as a verb, and wang lai paired more with nouns such as business, trade, education, 
or simply an exchange of visits for whatever purpose. Now we have a four-character idiom, meaning literally the dawn of history. Yoshi It sounds like it should mean a very long time, but it's often used colloquially to mean from the precise beginning of anything. A company's founding, an artist's career, a building's construction, even a person's birth. So, ignore the melodramatic translation, dawn of history, given here and in dictionaries. Here are other examples of Eli. Over the past 24 hours, my worries have increased a lot. They haven't called since we had an argument. Xiang Lai means up until now, or if negative, never before. Ta Xiang Lai Buchi Ro. She has never eaten meat. She's obviously a vegetarian. Ban Lai translates as originally or at first. I didn't believe it at first. Her original intention was to go abroad. Now here are some resultative verb compounds like those in Lesson 35 with both actual and potential examples. My mornings are busy. There is no time to eat. Bu ji, remember, means not to reach, not to attain. So the common phrase, wo lai bu ji, means I can't make it in time. Ni de shu xia ge yue chu de lai ma? Will you be able to finish your book by next month? Chu shu means to get a book out, to publish it. Zhong guo zi, wo bei bu lai. I can't seem to memorize Chinese characters. Adding bu lai often indicates that it just doesn't come naturally to me. Ma ro wo chi bu lai. I can't bring myself to eat horse meat. The third character in today's lesson is lai with an approaching foot element added at the bottom to show approach or arrival, clarifying the fact that while millet was the staple food, another grain, wheat, had arrived from faraway lands. The original wheat pictogram, lai, was borrowed for its sound to mean come. This new character took over the meaning of wheat. It's pronounced fourth tone, mai, mai. Anyway, the general term for either wheat or barley is mai zi, xiao mai, referring specifically to wheat, and da mai, to barley, which is a larger grain. Quan mai mian bao is the way to say whole wheat bread in Mandarin. Wo yao hui jia xia ge mian shi. I'll go home and cook up some noodles to eat. Xia mian is the expression meaning to drop dry noodles into boiling water. But these two characters, without context, could be misunderstood as the first phrase I introduced today, xia mian, meaning underneath. To differentiate the homonyms, Chinese speakers sometimes add ge and say xia ge mian when they mean boil noodles. The fifth character in today's lesson Again, contains stalks of grain, but this time the stalks are being rubbed between the hands to separate the grains from the chaff. The left hand is the helping hand, which means it's helping to separate the grains. So the right hand's action is included. This character is pronounced in one of three ways. First tone, cha, first tone, chai, and fourth tone, cha. 
one other pronunciation exists, but only in one set phrase, so I'm going to ignore it. Here's a very common expression, 差不多, which translates as just about enough, almost the same, nearly, not enough to matter. 他们五个人的能力差不多. As far as ability goes, those five people are about the same. 两个人的技术相差多少? How much of a difference is there between the skills of those two people? When rubbing hands together to release the millet grains, the two hands are not aligned together. From this misalignment derives the extended meaning of the adjective, uneven, no good, poor, disappointing. Either first tone, cha, or fourth tone, cha, can be used here. 你的日语好,少来,太差了, or 太差了. Your Japanese is good. Oh, come on, it's awful. Notice the imperative, 少来, which means something like, cut it out, don't give me that. Next sentence uses the pronunciation chai, meaning to send or dispatch someone on an errand or a mission. This extended meaning derives from the idea of rubbing hands to and fro, go and come back. My brother's not here. He's out of town on business. My boss sent me to Japan on business. Chai shi is the phrase for a job or a task. I found a job at a home appliance store. Now, here is a possible logic development chart giving the meanings along with the different pronunciations. Today's sixth character is unrelated to either bian, lai, or cha, but it goes well with noodles, beef. It's the character for ox, cow, and its meat, beef, pronounced second tone, niu, niu. I have two example sentences. Some people never eat beef. Notice that the expression 从不, never before, has a more complete version, which is 从来不. 牛肉面,好好吃. Beef noodle soup is delicious. Beef noodle soup is a popular lunchtime meal in Taiwan, with restaurants holding regular competitions to see who can cook up the best tasting soup. The seventh and final character in today's lesson is a combination of the person radical and the ox. It depicts a person next to an ox. What is understood but not shown is that the person is butchering the animal, cutting it into pieces. Pronounced fourth tone, jian, jian. This character means one piece or article of something. This makes it an important measure word, as in the next example. 他找我有两件事. He came to see me about two different issues. If the measure word is placed after the noun, a new noun is created. It's the overabundance of homonyms problem in Chinese, because single characters are easily misunderstood. We learned before that 本 is the measure word for 书, and 书本 is clear and more easily understood. Likewise, 
Jian is the measure word for shi, meaning matter, affair, issue, or business. By turning the characters around, we have created a more specific noun, shi jian, meaning incident or event. Yi ge ke pa de shi jian, a frightening incident. Here is our color chart with today's seven characters. Mian, cha, chai, lai, mai, niu, mian, and jian. Here's a summary of today's lesson. 1. The character Mian is a metaphorical face, the surface, aspect, or side of anything. It's not used to talk about face as a part of the body. 2. Apart from physical surfaces such as front, back, upper, lower, and outer side, another important usage is face as a metaphor for one's reputation in society. You Mianzi Mei mianzi, yao mianzi, mai mianzi. Three, a very useful construction is yi mian, yi mian, for two simultaneous actions. Four, the verb to come is lai, a homophone originally meaning wheat. As wheat and barley were not indigenous grains in China at the time, a foot placed at the bottom of lai clarified that these grains came from far away. In his work on oracle bone characters, the author Shen Kai says ancient inscriptions show that Lai was in use for to come long before the character Mai appeared. 5. There are many new adverbial expressions including Yi Lai, since, Xiang Lai, up until now, Ben Lai, originally, and Tong Lai Bu, never before. Six, new resultative verb compounds include Lai De Ji, Lai Bu Ji, arriving in time. Chu De Lai, Chu Bu Lai, being published. Bei De Lai, Bei Bu Lai, one's ability to memorize. Chu De Lai, Chu Bu Lai, getting used to eating something. Seven. The character meaning to rub hands together to separate millet grains from their stalks has four pronunciations, three of which are common, cha, cha, and chai. The first tone, cha, and fourth tone, cha, are in some instances interchangeable in colloquial Mandarin. I also propose a possible sense evolution in a chart to help those who cannot see the connection between the different dictionary definitions. 8. The character for wheat and flour and noodles is simply the recent combination of the wheat radical plus mian as phonetic. The simplified character has removed the wheat radical entirely, leaving face with a new meaning. 9. A popular lunch staple is beef noodle soup, niu rou mian. Aside from a small group of Muslim Chinese, the Taiwanese did not eat beef, and many of the older generation still do not. Oxen, or the water buffalo, were considered work animals, and beef cattle were extremely rare and too expensive to eat anyway. However, in 1949, many Chinese soldiers from Sichuan province retreated to Taiwan after losing the Civil War. They longed for that taste of home and mixed their fiery Sichuan spices into Taiwanese noodle soup 
along with the beef the American soldiers stationed on the island were eating, to create niu rou mian. So yes, this is an original Taiwanese dish. 10. Another reason for introducing the character for oxen and cows is that it appears in many characters, including jian, an important measure word meaning piece or component part. The original meaning was a man butchering an ox, cutting it into smaller pieces. Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple character, and longer expressions. Answer using only the characters learned so far. Thank you for watching and listening.